Now this elevation is coming together, the only thing that we need to do now is to remove all the construction lines once we're finished and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to select and delete all of those lines and make sure it's all looking the way that it should. So that's all working quite well. Uh, the one thing that we are missing is a gutter. So I wanted to show you a, a clever way of drawing that gutter line. One way that we can do that, again just in a 2D method, is using a fill but we're going to use a fill type called a linear gradient fill. Now to do this I'm going to use a grey and a white. And we draw this fill just like any other fill, so I'm going to start by just drawing it. I'm going to move it from the top uh, at the eave line and then we'll move it down. And then I'm going to offset that to be 75 millimeters deep. Now we'll it will automatically draw that for us. It's just not done correctly. Uh, first I'm going to move this gutter down, so I'm going to move that down 50 millimeters. And now in order to make this gradient fill work properly, we have to select this line. I'm going to click on the bottom and then we need to rotate that arm up. So we see that in this case what it's doing is it's going from grey up to white and what that's giving us the appearance of is the idea of a half round gutter where the shadow is getting darker at the bottom. And once of course we've created that once we don't need to recreate it, we can just multiply it or drag a copy. I'll just use the, the Eve line as the reference and then we can shrink these ones or stretch or offset edge to make these fit to size. So now we've got a completed elevation. Uh, now the second elevation is very, very similar to this, so we can use that as a reference. Now I'm just going to continue this line through and change that. So one way we can do that is to pick up the setting by holding Alt and then Alt Control, Alt Command will inject, and we see that these commands are here as well. So pick up parameters, inject parameters. So that's a good way to be able to represent that ground line. Now what we need to probably do is to reduce this one to here, remembering that our ground line changes in our garage. And then what we'll need to do is extend this line down, probably at least another 86 millimeters. Now that could be a drop edge of brick or that could be a concrete edge We'll just do that out of brick because it's probably a nicer design response. And then we just need something to, to represent a ground line. We always need to show a ground line. My preference for that is either to use a fill tool if I was working in 3D or a, a polyline. In this case, we'll use a polyline and we'll make it quite thick to represent the ground line. And the ground line is just going to show where the building sits on the ground. Now again, this is a fictitious site, so it doesn't really matter how accurate we are. And of course, when we show true line weight, the intention is that this line is quite thick. Now, this is about as thick as uh, the lines go in this particular set of pens we've got. And in other videos, um, I've shown how to customize our pen settings so that we can make them work for the way that we work. So generally I'd have a much thicker pen to represent that ground line as well. So in the next video we'll just have a look at how to not start from scratch with the final elevation but use this one as a, a basis, as a template and then do a small amount of modification to create our final elevation that we see here.